On the Pampas by Maria Cristina I grew up in Argentina, in South America. I lived with my family in the big city of Buenos Aires. But we spent our summers in the country, at my grandparents' estancia. One summer, my parents and my brother stayed in the city, so I went without them. My grandmother met me at the station in Buenos Aires, and we had breakfast as we rode through the miles and miles of the flattest lands in the world, the Pampas. All around us, as far as we could see, were fences, windmills, and millions of cattle grazing. Our station, San Enrique, was at the end of the line, where the train tracks stopped. My grandfather was there to meet us in his pickup truck and take us the five miles left to the estancia. The ranch was called La Carlota, and the gates were made of iron bars from a fort that had been on that very spot a hundred years before. As we drove up to the gates, we were greeted by a cloud of dust and the thundering of hooves. It was my cousin, Susanita, on her horse. Susanita lived at the estancia all year round. She knew everything about horses, cows, and all the other animals that live on the pampas. Even though she was three years longer than me, she had her own horse, La Baia. Susanita was so tiny, she had to shimmy up La Baia's leg to get on her back. But she rode so well that the guachos called her La Guachita, the little guacho. I didn't have a horse of my own, but old Salguero, the ranch foreman, bought me Pampita, a sweet-tempered mare to ride. She wasn't very fast, but she certainly was my friend. Susanita and I did everything together that summer. She was the one who showed me how to take care of the horses. We would brush their coats, trim their hooves, and braid their manes and tails. Susanita was always ready for an adventure, no matter how scary. She used to swim in the creek, holding on to La Baia's mane. At first, I was afraid to follow her, but when she finally convinced me, it was a lot of fun. I wanted to learn all the things a guacho has to know. I wanted to ride out on the pampas every day, as Salguero did, and to wear a belt like his, with silver coins from all over the world and a buckle with my initials on it. Salguero said I'd have to begin at the beginning, and he spent hours showing Susanita and me how to use the lasso. It was going to take a while for me to become a guacho. The first time I lassoed a calf, it dragged me half away across the coral, but Salguero told me that even he had been dragged plenty of times, so I kept trying until I got pretty good at it. Whenever the guachos were working with the cattle, Susanita was there, and before long I was too. Sometimes the herd had to be rounded up and moved from one pasture to another. I loved galloping behind hundreds of cattle, yelling to make them run. I never got to yell like that in my city. One day, we separated the calves from the cows to vaccinate them and brand them with the scissors La Carlota's mark. That was more difficult and more exciting too. I tried to do what Salguero told me to do, but sometimes I got lost in the middle of that sea of cattle. At noon, everybody would sit down around one big table and eat together. I was always hungry. Grandma Susanita's mother and Maria, the cook, had been working hard all morning too. They would make soup, salad and lamb stew or pot roast or my favorite, carbonada, a thick stew made from corn and peaches. After lunch, the grown-ups took a siesta, but not us. We liked to stay outdoors. Some afternoons, when it was too hot to do anything else, we rode out to the eucalyptus grove that was nice and cool and stayed there until it got dark, reading comic books or cowboy stories. Other times, we would gallop for two hours to the general store and buy ourselves an orange soda. Then, while we drank it, we'd look at the saddles and the bridles we planned to have when we grown up and rich. Sometimes the storekeeper would take down a wonderful guacho belt like Salguero's and we would admire the silver coins and wonder where each one came from. One day we rode far away from the house to a field where Susanita thought we might find Nandu eggs. They are so huge you can bake a whole cake with just one of them. 
After riding around all afternoon, we found a nest well hidden in the tall grass with about 20 pale yellow eggs as big as coconuts. Salguero has warned us to watch out for the Nandu, and he was right. The father Nandu, who protects the nest, saw us taking the, an egg. He was furious and chased us out of the field. The next day, we used the Nandu eggs to bake a birthday cake for my grandmother. We snuck into the kitchen while she was taking her siesta, so it would be a surprise. The cake had three layers, and in between them we put whipped cream and peaches from the trees on the ranch. We had a wonderful party for my grandmother's birthday. The guacho started the fire for the asado early in the evening, and soon the smell of the slowly cooking meat filled the air. There was music and dancing too. We stayed up almost all night, and I learned to dance the zamba, taking little steps and hops and twirling my handkerchief. Most evenings were much quieter. It was just the hum of the generator that made the electricity for the house. We loved to go out to the mat house, where the guachos spent their evenings. We listened to them tell ghost stories and talk tales while they sat around the fire, passing the gourd and sipping mate through the silver straw. We didn't like the hot, bitter tea, but we loved being frightened by their spooky stories. The summer was drawing to a close, and soon I'd be returning to Buenos Aires. The night before I was to leave, Salguero showed me how to find the Southern Cross. The generator had been turned off, and there was only the soft sound of peppers. We could see the horses sleeping far off in the field. The next morning, my last at the Estancia, Susanita and I got up before dawn. Pampita and the other horses were still out in the field. Salguero handed me his own horse's reins. He told me he thought I was ready to bring in the horses by myself. I wasn't sure I could do it, but Susanita encouraged me to try. I remembered what I'd seen Salguero do. I tried to get the leading mare with her bell to go toward the quarrel and the others would follow her. It wasn't easy. The foals were frisky and kept running away. But I stayed behind them until finally the little herd was all together, trotting in front of me. I was so busy trying to keep the foals from running off that I didn't notice the whole household waiting in the quarrel with Salguero. Everyone cheered as I rode in, and before I knew it, my grandfather was helping me off the horse. You've become quite a guacho this summer, he said. My grandmother held out a wonderful guacho belt like Salguero's, with silver coins from around all the world, and my initials on the buckle. And, she added, there's something else every guacho needs. Next summer, when you come back, you will have your very own horse waiting for you. She pointed to the leading mare's foal, the friskiest and most beautiful of them all. Before I could say a word, the foal pranced ov over to me, tossing his head I would have the whole winter to decide what to name him and to look forward to my next summer on the Pampas.